and welcome to the Good Girl Confessional Podcast. I am your host, Sandy Lowrys, and the Good Girl Confessional Podcast is proudly brought to us by WB40, Women Beyond 40, a platform and magazine for women 40, 50, 60 and beyond who want to be seen. You can check us out at wb40.com. Before we begin this podcast today, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which this podcast is recorded. And in my case, that is the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nations. I would like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I would also like to acknowledge their incredible history of storytelling. Today in the podcast, I am thrilled to be chatting with a vibrant charismatic woman. Her name is Jules Rolnick. And Jules has been through some extraordinary experiences. She has written a book which is called Secrets of a Super Host. Um, how to become an Airbnb rock star. So if you're thinking about starting an Airbnb, this is the book you need to have. But this book is also part memoir. And what led Jules to having a career in the Airbnb space um, was going through quite a traumatic experience. You won't want to miss this. Jules has, you know, gone through trauma, has come out the other side, has built an extraordinary career and is very passionate about helping other women to gain financial security. She's done everything from Airbnb to making it to base camp at Mount Everest, Please welcome to the podcast, Jules Rolnick. Hey there. When Sandy's not interviewing kick-ass women, she's hanging out with me at Alex the Seal, a podcast about music and nostalgia. I'm Joe Pipus, and each episode, Sandy and I talk about all the songs that got us hooked up, knocked up, and broken up. Do yourself a favour and search Alex the Seal on your podcast app. Hello and welcome to The Confessional. Jules, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me on. You look gorgeous. I'm loving this pop of green. Yes, it's my favourite colour too. So it's everywhere at the moment. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It matches your eyes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. I could talk to you all day. Uh, well, I'm so happy that you join me today on the Good Girl Confessional. Confessions, of course, are always optional, but we do love a few. And um, oh, yes, <laughs> of which I'm sure you've got a few. Um, I do, I do. <laughs> first of all, congratulations on your incredible new book, which is Secrets of a Super Host: How to Become an Airbnb Rock Star. Thank you, my dear. Yes, speaking of confessionals, <laughs> speaking of confessionals. <laughs> Because I think I love this book because it really is part memoir and part like tips from an expert. It's it's really quite beautiful. And man, have you had the journey? And that's only one side of or one part of my life. I've had many journeys, but yes, yes, yes. It's you um, have. it's not a bad story. So it's pretty amazing to be a bit of a rock star in the Airbnb world in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't get used to that. But, you know, I did have – I've had a couple of guests call me that and I just thought, look, how can I – it would be so remiss of me not to add that in because it's just hilarious, isn't it? No, I agree. I love it. I love a rock star. And, um, look, I think yeah. you, you have to own it because the reality is that you are seriously – in the Airbnb world, you're at the top of your game. You're a consistent um, what they call super host. But before we get into mm. that world – I really wanted to start with how you ended up in the world of Airbnb. So tell us okay. a little bit about that journey. Okay. Well, we have to go back to the start of sort of where it began, and that was um, oh, back in 2013. My husband, Adam, had just been diagnosed with bowel cancer. Now, he is a really fit guy. So, you know, when he walked out and said, I've got some news, I've got cancer, I kind of went, what? You know, I'm sitting there enjoying my cup of coffee, enjoying the sunshine, and then I went, oh, my God. So the And the scary thing was it had progressed to the liver. So once it goes into the liver, you're, you know, pretty much up shit creek without a paddle. Oh, excuse me, am I allowed to? No, you're allowed to swear on this podcast. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was sort of looking down the barrel because 
um, you know, I was 44. I hadn't had a real job, whatever you want to call that, for many years. I had two young kids and, yeah, I knew I couldn't afford the mortgage. And like a lot of couples living day to day, you know, week to week. So funnily enough, I was sitting at home staring into the abyss, as you do when you sort of had a bomb being dropped on you. And this book sort of fell out of the um, the bookshelf. And it was a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So a lot of, a lot of your viewers might know him, might not know him, but that book was written years ago, many, many years ago. And reading his book, I came across his wife, Kim Kiyosaki, who had written this book called Rich Woman. And I went, ooh, ooh, that sort of, it sort of was fortuitous, you know, it just sort of all sort of happened at the right time. And funnily enough, Adam had said to me, my husband Adam had said to me, look, I know someone who's bought a property and running it on Airbnb. She's doing so well. And he said, Jules, he said, you would be fantastic as an Airbnb host. And I said, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not sure about that. But I kind of thought, well, I need to, after reading this book, Rich Woman, I I realised, oh, property could be something that, you know, could be good for me, especially if, if something, if Adam carks it. And, um, yeah, so it was sort of, that's sort of how my journey with Airbnb started because I had to find a property first and foremost. So I sort of had to educate myself. And that's, I do stress to people that's one of my um three tips is you need to educate and research so yeah I sort of started researching going to um uh property seminars and so forth and yeah just sort of did all my homework and then worked out what I wanted and was a one-bedroom apartment and and worked out that the city was quite viable because it was good cash flow um in in the in any CBD is quite good for Airbnb. So yeah, it sort of started from there, and that was the beginning of, of beginning of it. So bought an apartment, wow. and went from there, and so in the middle yeah, of this wow. kind of traumatic experience, this traumatic news for your husband, you yeah. of course must have been fretting, and you know, you have, yeah, great story because you you're thinking, how am I going to support my kids? How am I going to keep my kids in school? Yeah. How am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to do all of these things, and you know, I think for a lot of women in our demographic, especially, this is such a common story where, you know, the part, the male partner uh, or one partner goes out and works and is the major breadwinner and the other partner stays at home and takes care of the kids and sort of like doesn't really think too much about long term. What does that mean for me in terms of a career, in terms of being able to make money, in terms of being able to support a family. Um, and a lot of women, of course, find themselves single for a number of reasons. Of course, no one ever expects to get news, say that, oh, my husband's got cancer, and looking down the barrel of a not-so-good diagnosis. Um, so that was a pretty gutsy, ballsy thing for you to be doing. How were you coping at that time, though, with a husband who's not well um, and goes through treatment? And kids. Yeah, look, it was tough because I've I've sort of been quite a survivor most of my life. I lost my mother very young. I lost a sister young. My father passed away. In in one year I had four, you know that movie Four Weddings and a Funeral? Well, I had four four funerals and a wedding. And I've had to sort of do a lot myself. So at the time it was really challenging because it was just me. I didn't have I didn't have any support. Um you know, I was on my own. I hit the bottle, as you do. That was a coping mechanism at the time. You know, you're up the ante at times like this. And, you know, alcohol was always a, um, you know, it was something that I, was a crutch for me because of all the trauma I've had in my life was something that, and my father was an alcoholic. So it was something that I always sort of um, latched onto so I didn't I did wasn't doing it very well I was sort of getting through and you know I was always a great mum and I know a lot of women don't like to you know we, we're always putting ourselves down and for many years I did put myself down but because you know I was always my kids came first I was able to get out of bed and still function and you know they're amazing rock stars themselves my kids and and are proud of me and so forth but at the time yeah it was um it was bloody tough but um and I knew I thought I've got to do something and you know often it's that when you have your back against the wall 
And I mean, Adam was a lawyer at the time, barrister, and um, or a lawyer. God, I've I've got to go back now. It was a few years, <laughs> but um, you know, we'd worked really hard. I put him through law school back in the day, um, and happily so because I knew he was a sure bet. I knew he was a good one, and you know, it was like, well, if he doesn't make it, I really don't have. Um, any anything so it was really one of those moments and when I picked up that book and read it and I just love how that happens in life you know things happen what do they say when the masters when the students ready the teacher will appear well that's certainly been in my life so yeah that's sort of where I was at but yeah I had many nights where I was in a fetal position crying my eyes out I get emotional now thinking about it but um yeah it was tough but we got through yeah, you did. And thank you so much for your, your honesty with all of that and for sharing that with us, because I know it is a really, really tough thing to relive and, and to go through. And look, um, you know, how is Adam now? And um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, Adam's fantastic. And in fact, he, he, he was one of those guys, you know, very proud. And even at the time when he had cancer, he didn't really want me to tell anyone. So I had to sort of go through it really just sort of soldiering on and not really talking much about it to people. But he's he's doing fantastic now. He's, you know, he had the all clear for some years and he said recently, you know, cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me and it really changed us because we were sort of, you know, bordering on probably separating before cancer. I think too when you've been through so much um, as a couple and hard times and, and even in general, I mean, everybody goes through hard times when you're in a relationship, you know. it's I don't know anybody that <laughs> goes through unscathed, but it's it really brought us closer together and, yeah, we're a formidable, absolutely formidable team now. So, <laughs> so thank you, you know, thank you, Council. I don't, I don't say that lightly either, by the way. I wish it hadn't happened, but it didn't, you know. It was positives that came out of it. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So we had um, a, 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 she's a friend of mine now, a beautiful woman on the podcast. It, she's in America, Kimberly, and she was talking about, so she had um, like rectal and colon cancer and now has an ostomy and she's a huge advocate um, for people living with ostomies. But she was saying that she takes so much of that cancer journey as a gift for what it gave her and the focus that it 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 just changed her focus on life um her family her children her partner her friends and everybody and it just yeah she said that she gained so much out of the experience that was actually positive um which was quite an, an extraordinary thing to say but you're saying exactly the same thing well, it's true, and I think my whole life I've um, I've always seen that, or for me, I can only speak from my own experience, but everything I've gone through where it's like you're in the depths of Mordor and you just, you, you think you just can't get out and it's really hideous. And, um, and, you know, as I said before, you know, alcohol was my friend for many, many years in those dark times. Um, but what often happens is in those times, that is when the gifts appear and, and you, when you come out of the darkness, that's really often when you when you gain your strength. And, you know, people, I know it's easy to say, but I really believe that. I really believe when you go through such hard times, and I'm not just talking, you know, a blip here and there, I'm talking really dark times, that's when you know you find the jewels in the crown and you know the old saying there's always the darkness before the dawn but yeah I think that's true and I absolutely um agree with with sorry what was that Gordon's Kimberly, name? Kimberly yeah. yes yes sisters in arms sisters in arms I tell you um it, it's really I'm always struck um, by the extraordinary resilience of women because although I understand that it was Adam's cancer journey, really for you it was about holding everything together as women. Hello, Sandy here from the Good Girl Confessional podcast. The Good Girl Confessional podcast is proudly brought to us by WB40, a platform for women 40, 50, 60 and beyond. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see the rest of the video, please head over to WB40. 
wb40.com and subscribe to WB40 Extra. By subscribing to WB40 Extra, you're helping to support the hard-won wisdom of incredible women. So thank you. Please remember to like, share and follow.